Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of the Collider Games Podcast. My name's Dennis Den. I'm here with... So, guys, your boy Dorian. And we've got... Josh Reveyors. I think it's been... A, has it been a while since we got the, the three of us together? I, I think, think it's been a minute. Like yeah. a month or ma- maybe more than a month. Maybe yeah, a month or two before yeah. all three of us uh, are back. A lot of news. I, I had texted you. We're, doing oh, yeah. this, we're actually doing this episode a little earlier than usual because uh, tomorrow... We have, uh, are we allowed to say what we're doing? I, I, yeah, I think we can. Okay, tomorrow we're going to check out the Doom Eternal. Hell we're going to yeah. be a demo of that. Anyway, so we're going to be gone for, I think, half the day, so we decided to shoot the podcast a day early. A lot of news, like I said, even even today, because I already had set off, uh, all right, uh, the the news of this or the t- topic and title of this episode is going to be about Sony skipping E3 again, which we're going to talk about. Right. Yeah. But then we get more news dropped upon all the delays that we're we're going to hear about, which is like Avengers being delayed, Final Fantasy VII delay- being delayed, but even bigger, Cyberpunk 2077. It was supposed to come out in April. Now it's delayed to September. They said the game is done. Yeah. They just need to polish it up. So well, that's what they're all saying. Uh, yeah, that's the, the, <laughs> every PR statement is saying the same thing. It's like we need to polish. It's, it's, it's all uh, everything's done. We just want to polish it because we want the fans. We want it to be up to the expectations yeah. the fans want mm-hmm. it to be. We know so nobody wants an anthem. On their hands. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. So but, I mean, well, speaking of delays as well, I know that they announced the delay a while back, but also the Last of Us too. Like it really is turning out to be the year of delays. Mm-hmm. Like, um, <laughs> so. Doran, what's your take on the delay? Good thing, bad thing? For Death Stranding or just in general? For Death Stranding, I'm Not actually... Not Death Stranding, uh, for uh, Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, yeah, sorry, sorry, De- Cyberpunk 20, uh, For Cyberpunk, I'm, like, I'm, I'm fine with them. Okay. Like, f- for them saying, like, it's it's completely done, like, and saying, like, the city is really, like, the city's really big and we just want to polish it, I'm completely fine with that. Just because, like, I'd rather them push it back and it'd be, mm-hmm. like, a ma- like, it'd be the masterpiece of... 2020 mm-hmm. like it'd be the game of the year like i rather that than it be released five months earlier and then they're like saying like oh we got to make these fixes oh we're, we're like doing a, all these updates and patch oh, yeah. glitches like within the first couple weeks so fine with me push it back which do what you got to do to make sure that this is a masterpiece like I'm, I'm completely fine with that like they said rome wasn't built in a day so if cyberpunk needs a couple more months i'll give it to them josh um, I'm gonna. I know I brought up Anthem again just now, but I'm gonna bring it up now for the reason as to why I'm okay with this. Is uh, um, Anthem did release a day one patch. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Looking back, they did release a day one patch, but by the time Anthem released a day one patch, they were slaughtered uh, mm-hmm. online. And I don't think any studio ever wants to go through that. Even if they released the game in the state that they would have on the date they would have suggested, they probably could have fixed it with a day one patch, but. Mm-hmm. People would have, they would have been like butchered, you know what I mean, in, in the news articles. So that being said, I mean, I think it's, I'm not, it is a big delay. Mm-hmm. I will say that it is definitely one of the bigger delays, which is unfortunate, but I don't know, man. It's, they have to take their time. At the end of the day, what, what can we do about it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm not going to be like n- a knocking on CD Project Red's door going, excuse like, me. Hey, where, where's that shit? Like, <laughs> you know, was, I don't where's know. crunch hour? These yeah. people don't need sleep. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, well, you need a flight oh, yeah. to, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, oh, where, where, yeah, wherever they are. In there. Um, at Narnia, <laughs> wherever that is. Um, um but yeah, they, uh, I'm okay with it as well. Like I said before, with The Last of Us Part Two being delayed, I was like, "Look, I, I still have a lot of games that I need to play or finish, and this just gives me more time. Not mm-hmm. that I there's a prequel to this, but just means gives me more time to play other games. You know, we have Half Life Alex coming on in March. We're gonna have um, uh, Last of Us Part Two. I think what in May now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of uh, it was supposed to come out in February. So look. I have plenty of stuff to play until that time. I know it's been years and years. This this project has been in development and delaying this back. So the people who are kind of waiting just for this game, I, I, I can see how they're going to be upset or pissed because they've been like waiting and waiting. And they finally got a release date and now it gets pushed back. I'm okay with the polish. I I think. I mean, I mean, I was gonna say for Final Fantasy VII, it's it's only a month delay. Mm-hmm. I've been waiting for this game since they announced it. It's been four years. I can wait another month. Okay. I, I'm more than happy to wait that extra month. Now, if we, <laughs> or, or, you know, like if if we get closer to the d- cyberpunk date, we get like a month away, and then they're like, "Psych, we are pushing it back Ooh. just a little bit more." Yeah, then yeah. I'll I'll be pissed. But if, yeah. if my, they keep it, my real it, question is: a lot of things are getting delayed close to the next like console generation launch like and I'm, I'm trying to think I'm, ho- I'm hoping at least that a lot of these games that are getting delayed closer towards the holiday time will we be able to see um, 
a better version of that on the next generation. You know what I mean? Or, oh. I don't know, yeah. but it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like this is because what they're talking about is they want Cyberpunk 2077 to be the crowning achievement for this generation, which mm. this generation being a PS4 and Xbox One. So yeah. they're not really talking about the next gen. And also, it's just one of those things, like I said, I'm okay with the delay. I think, you know, ultimately it'll be a good thing. However, because this game has been so hyped, it's, it's been so, it's been in development for so long, and now you're delaying again and saying, you're putting the polish on it. That means when it comes out, like it has to be. It's, That's what I'm saying. It has to be, be the ma- it has yeah. to be. It has to be. It has to be. It like. The day it it drops, I want all the game award people to be like, "Nope, that's the game of the year. We don't need any nominations, yes. other nominations. Like this is the definitive game of the year. That's how good it has to be for this delay to be that to for them to push it back this far." Yeah, you're pushing. You're you're just making the hype even yeah, even, even greater for it. I'm still I'm still gonna get the game when it comes out. That's, oh, that's yeah. for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, that's for sure. But I d- I do look back at like the PlayStation Three, that generation of consoles. Uh, the Last of Us Two pushed it to its uh, to its limits. So mm-hmm. did GTA Five. But then, literally a couple months later, when the next generation came out, we saw the update. We saw the remaster of mm-hmm. uh, Last of Us Two. We saw we saw the updated GTA Five. So I, d- I I I do think that they probably they I mean they definitely do it. They're they're gonna do it for the money regardless. But I'm wondering if it's worth people just waiting for that version. Then you know if I'm if I'm gonna wait this the, long the, for the, the delay, the, the fans are not. They're like, gonna, they're not. Like I'm gonna play the game because I want to play the game. Yeah. I want to see Keanu Reeves and I want to I want to live that life. But it's like I'm trying to think. Like I'm sure there are a couple of people out there thinking, "I'll just wait for the PS5 and get it on that." Possibly. Yeah. I mean, if someone is willing or to delay. Or the Xbox Series X. Yeah. Which I'm we, leaning more towards now. We, which is funny. I mean, a little side tangent here uh, with the Xbox Series One X. We reported last week or talked about the report of them saying there's no exclusives. It's weird. I saw on these launch like, or something. Yeah. At, not launch for a year. Oh. Like there won't be an Xbox One Series X exclusives and then i think a lot of people took it the wrong way because i saw a lot of complaints Mm. it doesn't mean there won't be exclusives for the xbox it's just that they'll double up on xbox one and xbox series x and i didn't quite get the backlash that some people had because i saw a bunch of people like well that's it i'm gonna get a ps5 and say i'm like you understand i i don't know if there are going to be any ps5 exclusives and when I mean exclusives like non PS4 games mm. but I'm pretty sure it's going to be very li- limited mm-hmm. right sure, yeah. most of the games coming in are going to be both PS4 and PS5 because studios want to make money how are they going to make money they're going to release it for the console that is most actively played and owned at that time mm-hmm. so I mean that that's what they've always done as well you know when PS4 came out they were still making PS3 games and same when PS I mean PS2 had the longest lifespan. They were making PS2 games like still like a, uh, like well into the end of the PS3 mm-hmm. cycle as well. So yeah, I just don't get that backlash because I don't think it's going to be very different for the PS5 mm-hmm. either. I, I don't think there's going to be many, if any, PS5 and exclusive. There will be PlayStation exclusives, just like Xbox will have Xbox exclusives. It just won't be Xbox Series X yeah. exclusives. Just like Halo Infinite is going to be coming out on both systems. Why? Because they're going to put so much money into this game, and if they drop it for a Series X, which, you know, even on a healthy sales of of the system, you're nowhere near what the, the installed base is for your previous generation. Of course, And yeah. they're active people. They're active people playing on that system. So that's just a side note. And because you're talking about Cyberpunk 2077 having mm. a potential... Uh, the port, next the gen port, the portability yeah, yeah. to the next console, yeah, that's great. That's fine. Um, I do I, I, uh, side tangent as well. I think uh, PlayStation Five doesn't have to worry because I, a lot of the people I've been talking to, I, uh, the first couple of months on the PS Five, they're just gonna be playing PlayStation One games and PlayStation <laughs> Two games. Like, which by the way, guys, anybody listening to this, buy them on eBay now because next year, like, I'm buying PlayStation Two games for like three dollars a pop uh-huh. right now. Once oh, that's the P- smart. Exactly. Okay. Once the PS Five, once the PS Five comes out. Those those games on eBay are going to be like thirty dollars a pop or, or mm. more because they're rare, you know. Yeah. Yes, remember, you can sell them. Just you can you can buy them just for the fact that you, if you want to flip them later on, smart exactly. thinking ahead. Art, I mean, making moves. Before they remastered Final Fantasy X, uh, getting Final Fantasy X on the PS2 before they remastered for the PS3, that game on its uh, like on on base, just the PS2 game was getting sold for like eighty to ninety dollars on eBay. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, now they remastered it. Now it's like three bucks. But <laughs> but yeah, go buy, buy your buy your uh, buy your games now before they're gonna be sold out or uh, prices go up next year. It's what I'm doing. I already got myself uh, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks and Def Jam huh. Fight for New York. Um, and then, you know, the, the multiplayer for Cyberpunk 2077 mm. won't be out until 2021, which makes sense if they're delaying this to yeah. September. Look, most people buying this game are not buying it from multiplayer. Yeah. Exactly. It's I'm, just, I'm it's, not even bothered. It's it's like the whole Red Dead 2 thing. I'm like, oh, some people complain. I was like, dude, I did not buy the game. <laughs> it's an added bonus if yeah. it's not that great. I mean, what I played was fun, but I didn't get super deep mm. into it. Yeah, You got your 80 hours of gameplay. <laughs> You know, and I played 80 hours, and that was like I rushed through it. So I imagine if I had really wanted to do like all the stuff, it would have been over 100 hours. And then on top of the multiplayer, which you can play for whatever, yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not I, complaining. I think most people aren't going to be bothered by that. Maybe it'll be a pleasant surprise, though. Like I mentioned months ago, mm-hmm. um, uh, the Last of Us, uh, the the original The Last of Us, which was just an, an, an mm-hmm. am, amazing game. I, w- I loved the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. I mean, mind you, no one ever played the mm-hmm. multiplayer because it wasn't really... I, don't, I never played the, exactly. I never played the no, multiplayer. Like, no one has, but I, I was just so pleasantly surprised by that. So maybe that'll happen to Cyberpunk. Yeah. where we we'll, And also by that time, most of us will have finished the game, you know? Mm-hmm. And then we get to, I guess, relive it again in a more competitive uh, setting. Um, I mean, let's originally we were going to talk about the Sony thing, but let's hold off on that. Let's let's just mm. fold in these other delays, right? Yeah. The other big delay. Well, let's talk about the minor one first. The Final Fantasy yeah. Seven so- remake. It's a month, right? Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. that big of a deal. It, it's and the, it's, like I said, the support has been crazy. People are so they're like, take your time. Uh, also, like if you look back, like I've been following this project since day one, and I know that the part of the reason for the delays is because they really had to help uh, Kingdom Hearts three mm-hmm. uh, to to be able to make sure the Kingdom Hearts three uh, hit its uh, launch mm-hmm. last year. And now that obviously Kingdom Hearts three is out of out of the way, they were able to focus on this. But like, I mean, I know that from the story I heard, they were literally two doors apart. It was just like going from one door to the other door. Like they're both Square Enix. They got to go help them out. Um, but yeah, so I was expecting a, de- a delay, to be okay. honest. Uh, I was impressed that they didn't announce a delay when uh, all that happened. Yeah, it's only a month from March 3rd to April 10th. And the the, the, the date itself has hopped around over the past four years. When they or- mm-hmm. originally announced this game, I believe it was meant to be coming out in 2021, possibly mm-hmm. even. And it's we're still getting the game a year earlier from what they initially said. Mind you, there was also a couple years ago when they said the game was going to come out even earlier, like 2019. <laughs> but either way, I'm still like, here I am happy. I didn't think four years ago I'd be getting the game, so I'm just happy to be getting the game. Yeah, uh, a bigger one, not as big mm. as Cyberpunk 2077, but bigger than Still Final Fantasy though, yeah. in, t- in terms of the length of delay. Uh, Avengers, Marvel's Avengers, has been pushed back to September 4th. Uh, originally, it was going to come out on May 15th uh, of this year. You know, that's a that's a significant delay, much like the Cyberpunk 2077. Good thing they're coming out before Cyberpunk 27. Yeah. <laughs> this one I'm, I am a little bit more bummed. Okay. A, a little bit more bummed about okay. the delay just because it seemed like they, like, from the original, like, first announcement and they got a little backlash mm-hmm. and then they were, like, saying we're already improving it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I kind of, I don't know, like, I'm in the middle. Like, I'm fine with them delaying it just to make sure that it actually, like, mm-hmm. comes out great. But at the same time, it was like, damn, like, I was, uh, I was, yeah. I was, I was really... I feel the yeah. same. I, you know what? I feel like... At least this is kind of my policy right now. If a studio delays a game once, it's fine. But when you start delaying two, three times, that's that. Then you're like, okay, there's a problem here. Because when you delay once, it's like, okay, it just got beyond our control. There's a lot more things we thought we had to do, so we readjusted and found a new date. But then if you try and if, if if you if you delay a third time, the only thing I'm thinking of is, is did someone buy your IP? Did you switch like studios? <laughs> What's going on? Um, no, yeah, that's that's a short look. The Marvels thing, like I think Dorian said it as well. I'm I'm fairly bummed about that one. The reason I'm a bit skeptical and bummed about it as well is because they don't have my trust the way that CD Projekt Red yes. has. CD Projekt Red has my <clears throat> full full trust ever since The Witcher Three. Like I I'll trust them with my kidney if they need it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bummed because it's like, I I hope that they do take, I hope they do polish it when it comes out. But it's one of those things where it's like, I just I don't know. How, I really don't know how I feel about it. I'm a bit bummed out with the delay. But how I'm, like how much more could they polish? Also, this that's thing? the thing is the scope of it. The the thing with CD Projekt Red and and Cyberpunk 2077 is that 
we know the game is huge, yeah. right? And it's it's very complex and complicated in terms of. Well, the, the, I mean, the, the city br- itself is the small, city, but, but and, the things in the city. Are yeah, huge. like it's just so in much. terms of your storyline, your branching yeah. characters, and the interactions. There's just a lot of varied things. The Avengers one is is pretty straightforward, mm-hmm. right? It's, yeah. You go on an adventure. There's no not a lot of th- intricacies. Th- it's not a sandbox. <laughs> you're not going. You know what I mean? It's straightforward. Here's the mission. Quests. You go. You you beat people up, right? Honestly, I'm thinking. Especially after today's announcement, I wouldn't. If I was personally, if I was Mar- the Marvel team and like being so close up to Cyberpunk, even though it's Marvel and stuff like mm-hmm. that, I, th- I feel like there's more. There's been more hype for Cyberpunk than the the new Marvels and yeah, Avengers of course, games. For so sure. I feel like after this announcement, I, f- I feel like Marvel should be like, uh, I don't want our game to be that close to to Cyberpunk's release. Like I want it. I, w- I wouldn't want at least a month bef- of breathing room. Before you have another big blockbuster game, mm-hmm. it's like putting two big ass movies back to well, back. Well, good thing they're other, not so. putting it after or yeah, on the yeah. same date. Because so then... I would, I, I would see after this. I mean, I would give it a month or so, but I would, I would say like, I hopefully we get an announcement saying surprise, we're pushing the date back up. We got a little bit more time. Like after today's announcement, if I was Marvel, I'd be like, hey, we need to get the engineers back in the room real quick. Mm-hmm. Like put put a little bit more pressure on them to like speed up just maybe like a few weeks. So it has a, just a tiny bit more breathing room uh, uh, being away from cyberpunk, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um, know. I doubt it will happen, but I, I just think it, they're they're too close. And my, my wall is not trying to spend money like that back to back. I, either way. I guess if you look at it, they really kind of bit off a bit more than they can chew. Like if you look at most superhero games, it's usually most superhero like open world action games. It's usually about the one superhero. Now they've mm-hmm. got to nail a whole team of people. And I mean nail. they got to get the cannon right. they got to get the suits mm-hmm. right. they got to get the powers right. Everything. They did. Like that's quite a lot to take on. Mm-hmm. If they just did an Iron Man game, that would have sold just as well, I think. And uh, Well, they, they did the be... Iron Man VR, but. Yeah. And there was also an Iron Man game like from like the I think it was like the first Iron Man movie came out and they mm-hmm. made a movie game off of it but I got like, the, I got that one on PSP by the way sorry hell yeah but I was gonna say like they should I mean especially if, with the success of uh, Spider-Man and the Batman series I don't know why there isn't a, a Superman out yet or why do we don't have an Iron Man like I feel like an Iron Man game on its own would be easier for them to hone in on their project rather than having to develop Thor and Iron Man and the Hulk and like all these other people you know what I mean uh, Ideally, they should have done it like the MCU, had their own individual games, individual and, then, games and then, you know, a, a boom, collab. that would have been so much money for them as well. <laughs> and they could they could have it set up like a, like the act, how the actual games and movies are, like it yeah. takes like a year apart from each mm-hmm. other, and like, I, I don't know, that, w- that would be cool that as well. Work, yeah, they could use the same engine for most of it, you know? So I'm hoping now that they have this time, they're also putting it, like I just said, they have the Iron Man VR that comes out like end of February, so may- hopefully uh, that'll knock people's socks hopefully off and give, them, good, give yeah. them a whole... A, a long enough hold over until the next Marvel thing comes okay. out. Um, all right. Now let's talk about what originally was going to be the main topic, which mm. is Sony is skipping <clears throat> E3 again. Uh, much more notable this time than last time because last time was like, look, we all it happened. We didn't like it. We we're like, okay, well, they don't really have that many big games. I, I think they didn't have like, they didn't have much to talk about, you know. Yeah, I think maybe Death Stranding was the only one they had. That was it. Yeah, I think that uh, Spider Man was already out at that point. I think as well. So yeah. yes. Um. So we were like, okay, there's no new system, but they'll be back next year because PlayStation Five is gonna be out, and they're gonna have Last of Us Part Two, and they're gonna have all these things coming. But apparently. <laughs> Not they decide to skip it again. Uh, like I don't know if I. I think it's gonna bite them in the ass, man. I think it's gonna bite. Them. I know that they're doing a bunch of other small things uh-huh. all over the world, but I just E three is pretty big, man. Like I like for years before like I started doing this with you guys, even like I I, I would watch E three and I was like that was my source of like video game like mm-hmm. like knowledge. You know that was my fountain of uh, of of knowledge for it. So it's like. I think it's going to affect their sales, even though I guess in their mind they're like, we do all these small shows mm-hmm. globally, and they've been doing more, more, a lot more stuff out of North America, mm. which is interesting. Like not doing as many shows in North America, but I don't know, man. I think it's going to affect their sales. I'm worried. I know. I liken it to the um, Comic Con when Comic Con when, let's say a Marvel or DC or whatever studio decides to skip out, especially when you're talking about like Marvel, Star Wars, or DC, (sighs) I feel like it doesn't do the fans any service because like I said, everyone's like, oh, well, they can have their own or whatever. There'll be a Marvel Con or a Star Wars. There already is a Star Wars celebration. Uh, I guess celebration. Sony's doing their state of play live stream or like over the year. I know, but it's just like, 
as a fan and as a person like I like going to conventions, but mm. the thing is, you you can only go to so much, right? Yeah. So if I go to E3, I want it all. I want it all. I want I want all the Xbox uh, games. I want all the PlayStation games. I want all the Nintendo games. I want everything in one place so that I don't have to go to separate conventions Agreed. for for every little thing. And so it, that's where I take issue with it. It's like okay, you can have your separate thing and just. They're doing a Sony experience, I think, in Japan later this yeah. year. It's probably to do with their VR, I'd imagine. But what? that would have done great at E3, I think. Like, do the Sony experience at E3. There would have been more people there. And it's like, I don't know, man. Then again, it's like we're not sitting at the board of, like, we're not sitting at the board table at Sony going, <laughs> like, making these decisions. That I'm sure that they, uh, I guess, like I said, in their mind, they really think that it's going to work out just as well. I mean, if it worked out for them last year, you know. Then again, yeah, I also I thought they were going to announce the PS5 at Gamescom last year, and they yeah. didn't. So <laughs> I, I was thought, convinced. <laughs> I thought they were going to do a big showcase of the PS5 at E3 this year. Um, you know, on a side note, to at least show what it looks like. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, because uh, on the heel of this news, you know, they asked Xbox. Phil Spencer said, "Yes, Xbox will be at E3 2020." So. Mm-hmm. Their plans is to showcase Xbox Series X. Get all those fans, man. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if this affects sales. You know, let's see what happens. Let's see one what Xbox shows and will PlayStation fans feel left out like there's nothing going on or <laughs> so I kind of like I don't know if Sony wants to do this but like Apple did a kind of Something like this at uh, at NAB. So NAB is uh, National Association Association of Broadcasters, and you know, there's more geeky for people who are into video stuff. But it's like they show off the newest cameras, newest software, everything to do with like gear and whatnot. And so you have big players there like Adobe and and Microsoft and all these big brands uh, that make cameras, like like Red. And, y- yes, Red, yeah. uh, Panasonic, like all these brands there. Well, many years ago, Apple decided to skip out on, on that, right? But what they did was they set up their own, like, separate little conference or convention for Apple Pockets at the same time. <laughs> at the same time, just not at the convention. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're like, oh, why split people apart like that? Oh man, I mean, I guess I get. I, I, I get Sony. The side it doesn't of things, say Sony's yeah. doing that, but what I'm saying is just reminds me of kind of like, okay, they, they separated off. Is yeah. Sony gonna end up doing that? I don't. I kind of. I, I kind of liked having Sony and Xbox at E3 because yes. it's like I. Even though yes, there are arguments, but there's like the spirit. There's like the console wars are still alive, you know, and it's like now it's just gonna be Xbox like all the way, which is cool. But it's like I want to see. I want to see a bit of that rivalry, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like I feel the same way like y'all do. I'm willing to give Sony the like I'm willing to like I think they emphasize in their article like they're really strategizing their 20 like their plan for global like a layout for mm-hmm. what they're going to do. So, I'm going to give them a chance like if they're going to actually hit it hard and like try to make it make it appeasable for everybody and go to all these events like mm-hmm. and maybe set up even minor like multiple events across the year building up until the the release of whatever they're trying to do then i'll give them a chance like if they actually go about making the emphasis on making sure everybody is like actually getting to play and test out these games because in the quote itself it says like our focus is on making sure the fans feel part of the playstation family mm-hmm. and have access to all of our favorite content and i'm not saying like it feels like a little jab to E3, because I, I, like, I don't know, because last year I feel like we were talking about when we were at E3, like, the whole time we didn't really even get to play much. We were just watching or sitting there, mm-hmm. like, not even getting to test out much. So I don't know if, like, that's a little jab at them saying, like, our fans are actually going to get to to play the games this mm-hmm. time rather than, like, either wait in line or just, like, see a little test demo that, that they're sense, not going to yeah. get to test out. So if that's what they're focusing on, then, I don't know, I'll, I'll, give, them a, I'll give them the benefit mm-hmm. of the doubt. Maybe. But why not have at least some sort of showcase, you know, press conference? Or, I'm going to say, like, at least show what it looks like. I mean, it's a huge press conference. At least show, like, what the PlayStation 5 is going to look like or announce maybe a couple more games on it. Like, we got a couple of the game awards, but, like, even those weren't, like, I mean, those are set, we know they're on the PS5, but we don't know if they're exclusive. You know what I mean? Like, I don't don't know, but, but I get what you're saying as well. Like, when you go to those conferences, it's difficult to, 
and th- like the time you do get on those on the on the games is so limited. Yeah, as unless well. you have a uh, yeah, un- yeah, unless you have like an appointment or something. Like if you're just an average fan and you're waiting in a long, long ass line, mm-hmm. you're like how many fifteen or e- yeah. not even that. 10, 15 minutes, I wouldn't yeah. say it's like it, like I remember Tony. He was in the Dragon Ball Z line for like four hours and didn't and didn't e- end up even getting to play. So like, <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, I, I, I so if, they, if they're going to emphasize on the fan aspect of it, then I'll give them a chance like to make make sure like yeah. fans get to play their stuff. Yeah. I, I'm, we, I remember we had like an hour to. Play play just cause four and then like that wasn't enough i got the game i was like this i I wish wish i had more than an hour to know what i was gonna get myself into um so yeah that's another thing a little disappointing um but hopefully we just get more news from sony i'm just i I need to know what this looks like dennis i've been i've I've been losing sleep yeah i I know what the dev kit looks like with the the v the 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 futuristic it looks like a freaking engine but i like i need to know like and the only reason it looks like that i think is because it's going to be like it's got to be like a car uh carp uh i can't even think of the word right now but i think it's for the psvr you know Uh, okay because i know that uh, all those extra boxes are going to be integrated into ps5 yeah I mean, surely Which they're not going to release this like VTech engine looking thing. So I, I'm curious. Sony makes very ergonomic looking things, you know, from mm-hmm. their TVs to their speakers to their headphones. So I'm, I don't know. I'm excited to see what it looks like. I want I want to picture it in my living room. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I, I I like the Xbox Alexa, but I want to see what the PS5 is going to look Xbox like. Xbox Alexa. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So moving on to the next thing, uh, the Doom Eternal trailer. Ooh, uh, the new one get, came out. You guys get to play that tomorrow. Yeah. I th- I th- play, yeah. I thought this trailer looked great. I mean, I I, I think I talked to you before uh, we didn't, started didn't I send you the trailer. I think I, th- uh, I think I sent you the trailer on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Either that or the Resident Evil Three one, one of the two. The thing is, is I told you like this type of FPS isn't totally my thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, just the the kind of high octane, you know, adrenaline, you know, lots of killing oh, yeah. and. Fast motion and you know what I mean, but I did play the demo at E3 and it was fun. It was fun and and I actually really like this trailer. Uh, I mean, like we have obviously we haven't had gameplay since uh, I think the previous E3 and it's this it looked smooth, man. Yeah. The melee at the end, mm, like it just looked smooth. It's one of those games where like. I need I need to get it like I think I think I told you earlier I got Doom <laughs> on PlayStation and I re- it's amazing but I regret it because it's one of those games where I can see I can see the freedom of a mouse and keyboard in terms of turning around in your mobility mm-hmm. and it's like it just takes me back to Quake Arena and it just makes me want a new Quake game so bad I just want a new Quake game <laughs> after this trailer I was like I I really want to play it because so we're going to the thing tomorrow but him and our writer Tom I think you met him he's on the, he's been on yeah. the podcast they're going to get to yeah. play it I'm oh. just going to be chilling doing mm-hmm. my social thing so like I hope this made me want to I'm going to take my spot back and be like alright yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to play this I'm game I'm sure you now. can sneak yeah. in there and start playing I really hope that they release a VR version for this as well Ooh. because Doom Virtual Fucking Reality was amazing <laughs> like I, I got to do it on the PSVR which is not the best setup and uh-huh. it was just I oh oof, I could just imagine un- untethered on the on the quest if that's even possible but like that was I loved the, I loved the VR experience for Doom and I really hope that they do it again for this next one yeah I mean the graphics look great Looks Are you guys gonna be smooth. able to do some of the multiplayer tomorrow? Uh, uh, I don't sure. believe so. I think it's like the first three hours yeah. of the game. Yeah, yeah. some more yeah. story. Which yeah, I, I remember story. I played the first. I would say first forty-five to an hour of the of mm. of it at, at, at e, the last at E3. E3. Man, the, the they, ma- they definitely make it more cinematic. More look, Doom's not a super story based. Yeah, well, they're um, they're giving it as much story. Yeah, as it can, you they're know? really they're trying to, and then you know the. Sl- uh, you know, it's funny what, looking at the comments in the trailer. Like they're making the Slayer like kind of that that Chuck Norris type oh, meme, yeah. right? <laughs> like, like you know, the Slayer has entered the chat, and then it's like all the demons have left the chat. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that type of thing. Um, but it's just funny, and I'm looking good. forward to it. You know, it, it looks crisp as well. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I mean, a good half of the trailer is cinematic; the other half is gameplay. But the gameplay looks sick. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna grab this one on PC this time just because mm. I, I want to. Like, I mean, you like you can get the same experience by upping your uh, sensitivity on your controller. But I just, I, I like it's like I, said, I grew up playing Quake it, on PC, so I need to. Yeah, even if you up, upgrade your sensitivity on your controller, you're not going to get the precision. Mm. Like a mouse would exactly. Yeah, uh, I know just by flicking my wrist like that, that's already a 180 turn. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it looks it looks crisp, man. It looks crisp. That's yeah. good. A lot of people are excited about this. Yeah, I don't blame them. Um, here we go. Uh, Halo, the TV series that's uh, going to be on Showtime. 
not that it's public, but apparently at uh, the Television Critics Association Winter Press Tour in Pasadena, which is right near here, um, Showtime uh, revealed uh, for the first image of uh, the Master Chief mm. armor. It, look, it looks good. And apparently people are raving about it. Oh, yeah. It, it looks good. I mean, I uh, like. I think I've, I've seen a lot of people already, like, making uh, comments referring it to the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. You know, having that, like, strong, silent character type. Um, it's, it's looking good, man. It's looking crisp. So, yeah, this is looking for a first quarter 2021 release. And that they're filming right now where? In Hungary. Hungary. Budapest, there we go. Yeah. Hungary. Budapest, yeah. So that's a good sign. I mean, people who saw it were talking about, yeah, how how good it looked. Haley dipped for that. Did well, she? Yeah, she she didn't get to see it. She left early. But she, no love. I know. For Master Chief and Halo. Mm. <laughs> Have you started the Halo series yet? The video games? Hey. No, not yet. Oh, that's, you got it. But I, you, I know. I'm, that's. I wanna, but you I know what you should do is you should play co-op. Dennis, we've we've established this already. Your boy doesn't have friends. <laughs> Oh, you don't have it on P- you don't have PS4. I mean on Xbox. Dude, I we can split screen it. Oh, oh shit. Like, okay, babe. Well, I, I don't uh, my favorite co-op uh, one was um Halo 4. I enjoyed the co-op for Halo 4. Uh-huh. Like, All right. uh, and I split screen that it's fu- okay. the entire right. game. Right. Co-op is so fun yeah. in that. Right. Especially when, like we'll set it up like, here with all Yeah, yeah, like when one guy's driving the warthog and the other guy's on the back with mm-hmm. the, the gunner. It's right. so much fun. We'll bring it in. We'll set it up in that uh, we'll set it up in the little the new console. Did you ever yeah. play Griff Ball? No. So oh Griffball was a multiplayer mode for Halo that uh-huh. involved you using uh, the swords and the hammers, and there's like a bowl, and it's kind of like a sport. It's, uh-huh. It was really, really fun. You, uh, I can't even begin to explain it, but Griffball, yeah, Griffball was my shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely Halo, especially before Halo Infinite comes out. Mm. Um, oh. All right, next one. I mean, H- HTC Vive Pro. Yeah. Uh, you sent me this, John. Yeah, this. I mean, this dro- is exciting stuff. They drop the price by two hundred bucks, which is a significant amount. Still, I mean, it's still pricey. We're looking yeah. at like eight ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, this is this, like, yeah, this okay. is the high end of uh, this is like with like the Valve Index, right? Yeah. With the highest resolution and whatnot. So, do we know what price the Valve Index is coming in again? It's a thousand. So, like so they must have dropped the price then to, to, to be compete. Able to compete. Yes. Yeah. So it's about a hundred bucks less than the index. Yeah. That make. Well, I mean, you, you're still going to need like. An eleven hundred dollar computer to run it, probably. Yeah, I mean the same thing with the, ind- the index yeah. as well. I mean, I don't know, eight- but that's a given at this point. Yeah. Where I slowly you could get away surely, with like eight hundred. You can yeah. get an eight hundred dollar computer that could True, decently yeah. run some some VR, just not the high end, high end stuff, yeah. or whatever. I mean, when you watch Half Life, Alex, and you see that trail, that is the you know that's a RTX twenty eighty yeah, with the Ryzen five. Y- yeah, <laughs> like. That's like optimal to, to to the max, you know. Man, this headline made it sound like you're getting a real good deal with that. That's two hundred dollars. <laughs> it's two hundred dollars off, guys. Two hundred dollars, man. Then you click on it, it's like, all right, it was a thousand something. Yeah. Was, I feel like that discount wouldn't like if you're already willing. To, if you like, already have the base yeah, stations, you, though, because uh, you can get the just the headset for five ninety nine. That's not oh, bad, well, still, actually. Oh, so. So if you already have the base stations and the controllers, oh, then the you can head- just swap out the headset for, for the a, for the cause, newer cause that's where Because that's where most of the I mean, it's going to have the, the it's going to have the 4K screen, better head tracking. It's going which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and then yeah, it gets it's it's right in time for um, the next Half Life. So I, th- I thought that'd be a good thing to bring up. Uh, and then yep. also, also um, if you own Jedi Knight Fallen Order, you can now have access to all the pre-order exclusives. Which is cool, but like, I, I mean, I guess it's a way of getting people to go back to play the game again. That is, you, you know, if, that's if you, exactly what it is. Because once yeah. I, I mean, like, not that I wasn't like planning on going back to play it anytime soon, but like, as soon as like I saw that news and like I saw like, oh, you can get all that, I was like, all right, you let know, me go back and I'll go play around a bit. Let yeah. me go, let me go see what, let me go swing see an orange lightsaber. lightsaber. Let me go be Ray <laughs> real quick. <laughs> yeah. hers, um, I thought hers was yellow. Was orange is yellow. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was she, like orange. She's Ray Skywalker now. Goldish. Um, uh, one of the other things that I brought up as well, which is crazy, is uh, well, actually, it's not that crazy because it makes sense. Mm-hmm. The Epic Games Store <laughs> made six hundred and eighty million dollars so far, and ninety percent of that is from exclusives. So they're probably never going to stop doing exclusives. Uh, th- why would they? You know. Yeah. If, well, and yeah. also think about it this way: Steam is the, the 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 big giant in this mm-hmm. space, and 
the only way you're really getting people over to your store is with exclusives. Of course, yeah. Um, and th- to me, what makes to me that when I read this makes me think how much money is Steam <laughs> making? <laughs> if Epic has this much of that that pie of 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 the online game stores. It's it's scary to think that, yeah. yeah. And, and here's like looking back now, because it's been a while since we've had the Epic Games Store. I was looking forward to it because not to use, not specifically to use Epic Games Store, uh, which I do use, but more so because I was like a competitor for Steam. Mm-hmm. Steam's finally going to make some improvements, guys. And here I am like a year later and Steam's the exact same and I've got the exact same problems. And I was they, like, oh, you would they think. They make so much money, they don't care. They, they really don't. I was like, it's, I mean, like, and Steam doesn't even, Steam doesn't even care what games they put on there. Well, there was a rape simulator on there at what? one point. Yeah, it was on there for like a whole day or two. Jesus. Like it was on like trending. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Jeez. I mean, it had a different name simulator, yeah, but essentially yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what you were doing. <laughs> like, which is crazy. Like who, like I said, there. Uh, Steam's green light uh, s- s- system is. It's, it's. I'm pretty sure it's fully automated. They have like, if you go to Steam's green light mm-hmm. page, you can play a lot of like early access games, which is cool. You can also put your own game on there. Mm-hmm. So obviously, it went through those routes to eventually being like on the top ten recommended. Speaking of Steam, you can go ahead and pick up Twin Peaks VR yeah. on Steam right now. Yes, you that can. Quick plug. <laughs> there you go. And there you go. Um, on and Oculus, and Oculus yeah. as well, if you prefer the Oculus Store oh, and platform. I think you mentioned something about GTA 5 on Game Pass. Yeah, yeah that was uh, Dorian told me about yeah, that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I, I downloaded it. I haven't, I'm, I'm going back on. My, I haven't played man. in about two weeks. I wish so. I was. I wish I was younger. I, I wish. If I, I, wish if was, I was young, if, if I was younger, I could have Game Pass, and it would actually be like beneficial. <laughs> yeah, beneficial to me. The only reason I don't have it is because I don't have the time to fully take mm-hmm. advantage of it. But like, if I was it's, uh, if I was younger, I'd be like, "This is the greatest deal ever." It is, yeah. and like I'm catching because I like took a whole. Like, Did you get like the first three months for a dollar? Did you yeah, do that yeah, deal? I, Hell I, yeah, I, I'm saving. Like, Did, I but even that. when you go back up, it's like what ten bucks it's, a month. I, even then, I don't. I don't think so. It, may, it might be. I but think it's ten it's, bucks I feel a like month. It's, it's, it. it's, 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 it's been, yeah. It's t- it's either ten or fifteen, but I think it's ten because that's PS Now service is ten as well. Yeah, but like, I mean, think about you're playing all these older, yes, but AAA titles. Yeah, a majority of my like catalog just in my library of like games I've saved have been, came from Game Pass, and and even new ones like Gears Five. It was on. Yeah. like they put Gears Five right, right on. Out of Worlds is yeah, on there. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous. It's such a good deal. They actually they got all the Gears games. They, I, you know what? That is what you can play Halo on is Game Pass. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right? yeah. I, they're, they're all. all like, yeah, I got yeah, them down. Oh, yeah. I just haven't like cracked it open yet. And so I need also, to. But, I'm going, but now he's saying to do it with co-op. So just hit me up. You, we'll you Dorian, if you did the one dollar for three months deal, uh, take a look into that because you with that deal you got half a year of Spotify Premium for free. You also got half three months of EA Access for free. Bro, so I need check it. out EA Access because that's also free games, bro. And you got three months of it. So All right, I'll look into definitely that. look into that because um, that was part of your uh, the the deal that they were doing. Yeah, no, I, I for sure got the one ninety. I made sure to. Mm. I don't miss three all the months discount. for a dollar. Yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> Hell yeah. Bro, come on now. Um, also, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, Kakarot. coming yeah. out tomorrow. Yes, and then you <sighs> you are gonna be playing it. Yes. later tonight. I sent you the review codes. I'm, like, I'm excited. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna review the crap out of it. Yeah. I'm, I've been looking forward to this game since they uh, an- announced it because even the fishing mechanics, <laughs> like down to the fishing mechanics, I'm excited. There's a side mission where any fans of Dragon Ball Z, like the uh, Dragon Ball Z series, there's a side quest where you. Goku and Piccolo get to get a driver's license, <laughs> and it's so what? amazing because you're literally doing your and, and if you do, you do this driver's license, you get a car. They get, I mean, you can fly around, but they give you a car so you can, if you want to, drive along the road in a car. You know, I'm very excited for it. Um, and I believe this is a game Tony waited four hours for at E3 and didn't get to play. Yep, nice. yeah, it's, it's uh, I've been told that the the combat is great. It punishes you for button mashing, so you can't just button mash your way through everything. Mm-hmm. You have to like time things and a bit of working out. The side quests aren't really worth it, but hopefully that's something they can fix over time and they can add more in. I just want it for the story, which is mm-hmm. what I've been told that they, is, it's amazing. If you're just there for the story, you're gonna be reliving all your favorite moments through this game, which is basically every Dragon Ball Z game, but now done on a much better platform and open world, you know, which is yeah. cool, or open world-ish, I should say, yeah. Cool. 
All right, uh, I think that's it for topics. You guys have anything else you guys want to talk about? Um, what are you playing? What playing you... it right now because I didn't play any video games over the holiday break, and I was sick like the past couple weeks. So I've just been dead. But now that I'm getting back into the motion, just been catching up on Apex because there's a there's a. Have you been playing like that new Gold Rush mode? I played no, one. Did, did you play the Christmas mode on the no, I train? No, Dude, I, that was I, amazing. I, that I, was I, such I, a good mode. From when I left for home, I like I made a decision to just leave my Xbox and stuff so I could oh. focus on the fam. So like the whole fair enough until I got back. In like January first, and then even still, like for like three weeks, I never, I haven't played. Like this is the first. Oh. It was a game mode where. Like, Ryan, what up? We're finishing up now. I didn't know. I didn't know uh, <laughs> whatsoever. I just didn't know that I was in here. Um, <laughs> Pro wrestling sheet, Ryan, everybody. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. No. But yeah, Gold Rush mode on Apex. It's um where you play as duos this time, but, like, every weapon is a gold weapon. That's a, a, awesome. Besides, like, yeah. the, like, the armor and stuff was, like, regular. But the every Winter Rush is was cool because you la- when you land, you already have a loadout. You have, like, a set loadout when you play. So you don't have to look around. You just land, start shooting. The one <laughs> Did they make duos easy. a per- permanent thingy? No, it's no. not permanent. Uh, I, I, I hope so. I hope, I wanted solos to be permanent. But no, there, I, I mean, like, there's a lot of issues with solos No, as well. I need, I like, I like... It has to be three people. I can't yeah. carry. I can't have the responsibility be fifty percent on me, especially, <laughs> yeah. if I'm, especially if I'm the better one out of the two. That, yeah, that yeah. you know you're in trouble. Yeah. Like I need three people, so there's there's at least another chance for somebody else to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been oddly enough uh, got back into Fortnite. Fortnite Two, I Trash. guess is now what it's called. I, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, I've I don't know. I've really been uh, enjoying Fortnite Two. Been playing a lot of that, mainly just because I have a lot of friends who play it. Mm. Uh, whereas a lot of my friends who play Apex nowadays work nine to five jobs, and it's difficult, uh. difficult to get a good session of Apex in, unless we're in the same room and we're landing. Uh, and then I've been playing Risk of Rain Two, which was on sale for thirty bucks. Uh, it is a sequel to my favorite game of my favorite indie game of all time. It came out in twenty twelve called Risk of Rain. It's only a ten dollar game. I got it on Steam one day because it was recommended, and I've clocked over uh, uh, probably near six hundred hours in, in the original game. It has a lot of replayability, and they took the original game. And just gave us a 3D version because it was a 2D side side platforming game. They gave us the exact same game but in a 3D world, and it's I've been playing for hours and hours. It's so good. If anybody likes rogue like ta- uh, rogue rogue like uh, shooters, check it out. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of like Doran, where like I during the Christmas break, I was like, oh, I've got plenty of time. I don't think I played. If I played anything, it I might have been Devil very May Cry Five. Sorry. Okay, I finished Devil May Cry Five. That was it, fucking incredible. If you haven't played it, yeah. yeah. is it so like? Good. It's like. Uh, do you have the same opinion as Caboose? He had a game of the year last year, I think. Um, or you have it up there, pretty. It's up, there. Uh, it's up. It's up there. I'd say for me, it's definitely like, and I, you know, I loved Outer Worlds, but I would yeah. put it above Outer Worlds. Okay, and I would, yeah, just Outer Worlds. Like, is, I'm still playing. Yeah. It's just one of those games where, like, the cutscenes are just so, like, I mean, literally what the director said was that they were going for is badass, and every single moment is just badass, dude. Like, it's, like, unlogical moments, but it's just cool, (laughs) epic, slow-mo, gun-slinging fight scenes. Oh, you gotta love it, man. It's like a 13-year-old's wet dream. Nice. (laughs) Um, And then, man, I guess as we sign off, and we had talked about all these delays, we had talked about uh, Half-Life Alex in March. I don't know, man. Now that I'm hearing all these other delays of these other games, I just you think Half Life's gonna get delayed. Yeah, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Man. It's possible, especially because March is right around the corner. Especially because they're looking at all these other studios and they're like, oh, if they can get away with it, you know, that's probably what they're thinking as well, you know. And also, you know, like we mentioned before, Valve doesn't need the money. I mean, they're, they they don't. Yeah, Half Life Alex, they're losing money making this game, okay? <laughs> because they're putting on the VR platform and they're losing money because they want to push ahead their hardware system, yeah. right? Which, which they're literally creating themselves in their own warehouses. That yeah, they, I think it's yeah. That's the that is the cool thing about the Valve Index is that it's American made and mm-hmm. here made in the states uh, in in war and warehouses. So that's kind of cool, kind of cool, I guess. But like they're so them delaying, I guess wouldn't really hurt them, you know what I mean? Like I uh, yeah, no. Spe- I mean, I haven't I haven't seen a tweet from Gabe Newell in here. <laughs> He's just sitting there on top of his pile of money like the dragon he mm-hmm. is. <laughs> no, it's, it's not going to affect him, yeah. Bit of unrelated news I just broke. Taika Waititi's being eyed to direct the next Star Wars movie. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Well, but yeah, but what's the next Star Wars movie? Cuz it's going to be standalone. It's probably going to be standalone. It's got to be a standalone yeah. because Yo, they should bring they should give us a Qui-Gon take a bre- origin they're, story. They're going to take a break from the trilogy uh Saga, mm. or at least a Skywalker trilogy saga, and then, yeah, I can imagine a standalone. But then, what's the standalone going to be about? Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be like a pre prequel. Like maybe, I mean, maybe we'll finally get to see some like Knights of the Old Republic 
type uh, situation. I don't know. You think this will, this is going to be the one Kevin Feige's producing? Probably. I mean, with the Taika Waititi connection, yeah. the John Favreau connection. I mean, with Taika Waititi, it's funny because like the whole Marvel team is now like starting to slow, like they're slowly like, right, take we, over we, Star we, Wars. We do what Maybe we have we'll to get do another solo game. movie. Hell no. Because like I'm no. just thinking because Taika, I'm only I'm only I'm not suggesting it. I'm only uh-huh. thinking that because Taika Waititi. I, I I love his stuff, but it, it always has a slight comedic tone. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think what Star Wars movie could have a slight comedic tone. I don't know. I feel like Solo, if, any, if we ever see Solo again, it would be on Disney+. Plus. Did, did you see they're bringing back Jar Jar Binks for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series? Yeah, I heard about <laughs> They're that. bringing back Jar Jar uh, Binks, bro. What the fuck? I, I'm, assume, <laughs> I'm assuming it's like a cameo. You know it, what I mean? Pro- like, probably, I, like yeah. I don't think he's like a supporting character. I think yeah. he's just like... Shows up in one scene where probably be like in the first episode, like they like go their separate ways. Obi Wan's like, okay, cool, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go do my thing now. Yeah. All right, uh, that's it for us here. Uh, Dorian, where can people find you? Find me on Twitter at Dorian Parks and Rec, and you can find me on Instagram at Dorian Parks, and we'll be here at Collider Games. Josh, you guys can find me on Instagram at Josh.Toki, and you guys can find me on Twitch at Josh underscore Toki. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Games. Subscribe to our podcast feed. That's the Collider Factory podcast feed for every single week we'll be here. So until next week, see you guys later.